Seth Kalina was so eager to enter our world that he arrived six weeks before his due date. A four pound, seven ounce preemie who was so tiny he had to stay in the hospital for many weeks, chilling out in what looks like a tanning bed in the hospital pictures. <laughs> he was the firstborn of high school sweethearts Robert and Bianca on April 17, 1967, and was their pride and joy. Jared had a very happy childhood. After 10 years living in Canarsie, Brooklyn, in Heightstown, New Jersey, our family settled in our Redwood Ranch in Pomona. It was there that Jared developed lifelong friendships with his loyal, incredible friends, Mike Ortenberg, Ted Savransky, Robert Liberace, Stu Kurtz, Evan Walt, and Seth Reznikoff, and so many others in Rockland. Jared quickly made an impact on his Pomona Junior High School classmates, running for the third highest position in student government against two much more popular boys. Jared plastered giant posters of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders in the school's hallways above the words, we're voting for Jared Kalina, <laughs> in giant block letters. When the votes were counted, Jared won. I couldn't believe it. Um, the greatest political upset since Truman beat Dewey 30 years earlier. Teenage Jared fell in love with music. I mean, I know he loved me, but he loved music. Um, he fell in love with music. He was a self-taught great bass player in student rock bands. He was a classic rock fanatic. He worshipped the Stones, Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Skinner, Styx, Kiss, Cheap Trick. I can go on for an hour. He spent years learning the art of Taekwondo, where everyone does, Route 59. <laughs> he beat his pals in Dungeons and Dragons and destroyed me in Atari video games and rooted hard for the Knicks, Mets, and Jets. Jared had the best sense of humor. He was naturally funny and had this, how great was Jared's laugh? It was like this uncontrollable, shaking belly laugh that uh, he would have if he saw a scene in Bla Blazing Saddles or The In-Laws or Stripes or when he listened to his George Carlin or Steve Martin albums. I loved making him laugh. He was the best audience. I would answer the phone as, as Elmo, because I'm not normal, and he would laugh no matter, what I, no matter what came out of my mouth. My brother was my protector. I always felt safe when he was around. He was stronger than me. He was bigger than me. He had substantially less back hair than me. He was smarter than me beating me on the SATs, I admit it, and the LSATs. But what was Jared really? What do, we, what do we think about when we think about Jared? He was the nicest, sweetest person I ever met in my life. He was, he was even nicer than me. And I'm really, really nice. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, come on. Jared was even nice to people who didn't deserve to be treated nicely. He was so good natured, he was smiling all the time and making those he interacted with feel good. He'd laugh at a bad joke just to make you think it was a good joke. And he'd listen to your boring story just so you didn't think it was boring. He was just, he was just good. He was a delicious person. He graduated George Washington University and soon I followed him there, excited to spend at least another year together. At GW, Jared majored in political science hung out with his best friends, Tony Curtis and Evan Walk, and bonded with his beloved, he loved them, Pice, Bicig frat brothers, who he just recently saw at a reunion, which is so great that he got to see them before he passed. It's unbelievable timing. After college, like many of us thrust into adulthood, Jared tried some different professions. He became an assistant manager of a Kuppenheimer's men's clothing store, but spent most of his salary actually buying the fine suits that he was supposed to sell. Um, Jared then became a purser on a Carnival cruise ship, you may recall. I had a brother gopher for two years um, in the love boat. Jared always had a big time, really big time feeling for Judaism, much more than me. I, mean, I, I know, I need to repent. He, he quit the cruise ship, he went to Israel, and he lived in Spa. I can't pronounce that I just couldn't. Oh, it was? Okay, perfect. Um, he was supposed to be there a month. He stayed for a year. He davened daily. He became kosher, a real true believer. When Jared returned to the States, we went to get him at the airport. Out walked Jared. Now he had a long beard, the black hat, the black pants, the black socks, the black, ja the black jacket, and black underwear, I'm sure. And then, <laughs> All I can tell you is my brother came back from the Holy Land as like 
a member of the Justice League of Super Jews. <laughs> <laughs> we walked right by him. We had no idea who it was. I'm not, you can ask them. We, did, we walked by him. Within six days, he was eating shrimp again. <laughs> but he, no, so it didn't take, but, but, it didn't take, but, Jared, true, all true. Jared was a true believer. He went to shul many times a year, each year throughout his life, and he deserves easy entry into heaven. Like no waiting, like, like easy pass, <laughs> easy pass. All right, once he found his calling, Jared started kicking ass, Tuchus. Jared started kicking Tuchus. He graduated from the prestigious, Car prestigious Cardoza Law School and practiced law in multiple states. He developed a great work ethic and worked long hours for many, many years. Jared had a wonderful relationship with my father, my mother, and my sister. Jared and Jennifer loved each other, but not at first. Um, when they were little, they fought quite a bit. I was the mediator. And Jared, no offense, Jared was the one who usually started it. Um, but in fairness to Jared, let's be honest, young little Jennifer, the little princess of the family who arrived in 1972, basically ruined everything Jared and I had built. <laughs> But as Jared matured, he loved and looked out for his little sister. Jared worshipped my parents. Our dad... <laughs> Am I standing on my father? No, thank you. Yes. No, no, this is... Yes. He's there, right? He's here. Oh. This is... Don't be disrespectful. No, this is big. Okay. Um, where are you going to be, Mom? No offense. <laughs> um, I just got to stop ad-libbing and just say something. Right um, Jared worshipped my parents. Our dad was Jared's absolute hero in everything he did. Jared's guitar and bass playing were inspired by my father, who was a guitar playing singer songwriter before becoming an attorney. Jared's decision to go to law school was inspired by my dad, a criminal defense and entertainment attorney. Jared always father followed his father's lead. They shared the same interests in so many things and were beyond close. My mom doted on Jared from the day he was born, even though she was not allowed to hold him while he cooked under that sun lamp for weeks um he could always depend on her to be there for him she always had time to have one-on-ones with jared and give him advice in between her insane life revolving around us three nut jobs cooking and cleaning and laundries and driving to hebrew school and doctor's appointments and little league practice and friends houses and homework and making us shop in jersey so there was no tax but she still found the time for jared anything he needed. They were very, very close and he loved her so much. My mother sometimes called Jared, I haven't confronted you on this my entire life. My, my, my mother called Jared Baseball Benny, a nickname she gave him as a toddler. I don't know why, I never asked why. His name wasn't Benny. The name Jared is not even close to the name Benny. So I just let it go. My parents love my brother as much as any parent can love a child. Jared was a great uncle to Alexis, Brianna, Jacqueline, Noah, Amelia, Sean, and Maddie. He and Elisa had a great relationship. What is that face? <laughs> I watched them bond over the years, though often at my expense, they loved to make fun of me. Not even behind my back, in front of me, <laughs> um, which is easy to do. But Jared shared a very special bond with his first cousins, Abby, Stacy, Sarah, and Nora, but especially Jenny. Jenny and Jared were the two oldest of the cousins and they were the leaders of us leaders of us youngsters at decades of Passover and Thanksgiving gatherings. Jenny was truly Jared's favorite cousin. Are there any other first cousins here before I confirm? No. Can we keep that? That's you know what what happens in West Babylon stays in West Babylon. But it's true. Jared's kindness and loving nature is clearly seen in his children absolute joys of his life. Jared's entire existence has centered around his love for Trevor and Daphne. He did everything with them. Those three were inseparable. Trevor and Daphne were all he talked about to me from the moment they were born. He had fallen in love with Ellen and produced two wonderful children. Jared lives on inside these incredible talented kids. Trevor, your father is so proud of you. He always tells me how smart you are how creative you are, how artistic you are, and how funny you are, which I already know. He sees you becoming a great storyteller, a writer. You do graphic novels, too. A writer of adventures. They told me you have an unlimited future. Daphne is his princess, his beautiful, brilliant girl with an amazing, sassy personality. 
and a maturity well beyond her 12, almost 13 years. Talk to Daphne and you'll think you're talking to an adult. Your Uncle Jeremy is here for you. I want phone calls, FaceTimes. I want visits. I want you coming to me with anything. I can't replace Daddy, but I'm going to be there for you guys always. For many years, Ellen and Jared were a great team, and I know how happy he was. Ellen, thank you for all you did for him and for raising these two gems. He truly appreciated and loved you. Big time. Jared was treated so well by Ellen's unbelievable family. Bob, Marie, Sarah, Jenny, Jimmy, Sean, and Maddie. Jared told me from the beginning and repeatedly when he married into that family, he said, they are salt of the earth, the greatest people ever. Let's not sugarcoat the situation. This is an absolute unmitigated disaster. It makes you question everything in life. If Jared, who everybody loved, more than Raymond, who everybody loved, can't be here, then who can? Why Jared? Why now? Why take this sweet, innocent person who never, never harmed a fly? Killed a wasp, but he never harmed a, fro a fly. Look, we're angry, we're sad, we're devastated that we're not gonna see him again, but we will see him again. We will see, we will see Jared in our dreams, in our daydreams, in our photos, in our videos, every time we close our eyes and picture him with that ridiculous beard or without it, <laughs> we will relive those uniquely Jared moments. All those moments where Jared made all of our lives just a little bit better, right? We are so lucky to have him for as long as we did. He was everything I could ever want in a brother. Come on. My best man who was always there for me. He lifted me high up in the air when I slid across the finish line and around the world at camp. Surrounded by hundreds of screaming Jews. It was awesome. <laughs> then he consoled me for hours after I lost my upper senior game, which was the worst day of my life before today, which is sad, but <laughs> how much I am into camp. And he also taught me about the birds and the bees. Because someone was uncomfortable to broach the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. On my birthday last Wednesday, Jared called me and before he hung up, instead of saying like the usual, love ya, you know, the throwaway, love ya, he like, I swear, he paused and he like enunciated and he said, I love you, man. I don't know, like, I don't know that he ever said it like that. Maybe he did, but I don't, I don't think so. And I just said, mm. I said, I love you too, bro. And I say it again, I love you too, bro. I'll see you on the other side. 